I travel back in time for just a second. Now you're going to hear me uh, tell you about what a great job I did installing all this stuff and how it went flawlessly, and we both know that's a lie. So I'm going to put links in the description below the video, and uh, there's plenty of guys that do installations on these parts that will do them far more elegantly than me if you want something serious, and uh, there's some guys that work themselves into a frothing lather trying to do it which is also got a high entertainment value. So I will leave you to your own devices for that. I'll just throw a couple of links down at the bottom and you can check that out and assume that I did just a masterpiece throwing this stuff together. So as you can imagine, I'm quite excited to get this thing assembled and we'll go with some low hanging fruit here and that will be the magazine catch or as some say the magazine release and that's this piece, a spring and a button, and when we've got it all fitted together, that's slotted in there. That seems to be a inexpensive parkerized piece. We've got a steel spring and a steel button, and from the other side, it'll be screwed into the button like so, and the spring will be slid on underneath there. And the point of all that is to hold a magazine in place. Let's see here. There's a little tease for what our magazine's gonna look like. And slot it in there, depress, and it should spring right out. So I'm gonna install this and play you a little elevator music while I do so. And then we'll look back at the finished product, we'll test it out on the magazine, and then we'll discuss the cost and some of the variants that are available to those who are looking for maybe a extended magazine release so it's easier to hit or uh, ambidextrous for people who are lefties or want to train to a different standard. Let's do it. Alright, as you can see we got it all installed, screwed in there. And we'll give it a quick test with the magazine. As you can see, that magazine's part of the kit, matches the trigger guard, and fits in there nicely. As promised, we're going to discuss the considerations that go into the selection of AR-15 components, and not surprisingly, we'll start out with cost. Like I said, I got all these parts for the entire lower Ottoman Aero Precision parts kit that cost me uh, 60 bucks and that's a lot of bang for the buck we saw they are not beautifully finished and they're steel so they're going to be heavier than aluminum components but the price was right and if I so choose I can swap them out later and put them in a different build next consideration is ergonomics what you see in front of you is an extended magazine release so you can see where the button is where the two six point screws go in and then it's uh, about more than double the real estate after that and if that's important to you it's going to cost you probably about 20 bucks for the part expanding on ergonomics is uh, handedness in this case the AR-15 was largely built for right-minded right-handed people and uh, the poor fellow you can see in the picture is struggling to get his thumb on the magazine release also, why don't we have prettier hand models? If you're not content to stretch your thumbs out and shift your hand position to release the magazine, an alternative is this ambidextrous magazine release from Troy. You can see it's got a toggle and that fits on the magazine release bar. And when you push down on that, it has the same effects as pressing the button on the opposite side. But being left-handed is going to cost you, as always, this baby runs 65 bucks. And the final consideration we'll cover is that you got to look good to feel good. So, peacocking. Let's attract some attention out on the range. There's a number of companies out there that provide standard releases or modified versions in an array of attractive anodized colors. We can see a candy apple red here. And if anodized doesn't fit your bill, you can go the Cerakote route and have people 
or yourself provide the uh, color and any of the numerous finishes available. So our magazine release and bolt catch, which you can see here, both came from an Aero Precision Parts Kit. These are all steel pieces. Parkerized, not a particularly nice finish, but the cost was 60 bucks, and that's for everything for the lower except for the buffer tube, spring, and buffer, which we'll cover again in the future. And this is your basic ping pong paddle bolt stop, it'll fit right in there. We're going to put the spring and plunger underneath it. And I'm going to tape off right there because I'm going to drive this roll pin in. And I don't want to mar up my finish any worse than I have to when doing that. And this is kind of a pain to get in. It was a little difficult to get the button threaded on the tip for the magazine release. And this is going to be fighting me because the bottom portion is going to be under spring pressure pushing against it. So... Again, we'll play some nice elevator music, and uh, you can think some nice thoughts while I'm struggling with that. And then we'll check back after the finish, and then talk about some of the other options for that particular part, including uh, nicer finishes, some ambidextrous options, etc. I'm not looking forward to this. I keep meaning to invest in a roll pin starter kit, but... Uh... I don't know. I keep thinking, oh, how many of these am I going to do? As all you astute viewers can see, uh, that went absolutely flawlessly and not at all like a war zone. I won't in any way shape or form be needing an aluminum black pen to touch up where I demolished the finish. Please ignore all the uh, brass shavings you see from the punch that I destroyed trying to drive that roll pin in. Let's get this thing cleaned up, have a look, and talk about other bolt catch options. This may take a few seconds. Hang on. I cleaned up my tape residue and there is a little scuffing right there, unfortunately. I'll be honest, this is the set screw model where I could have just popped that in place, slid the slit, set screw in and tightened it and uh, all my problems would have been over. And that would have been 20 extra bucks for that model. And uh, I'm being honest, that's looking real good right now, although then I wouldn't have access to my uh, super fancy trigger guard so I guess that's worth something we can't test the bolt release until we've got the upper installed we can't install the upper until we get these takedown pins put in here at a future juncture but what we can do is insert a magazine and make sure that that pushes it up and out of the way and moves freely and it does Well, we've already talked about the low-cost options, so here's a release with extended real estate, and that'll cost you about 13 bucks. And if triple the size is not enough, this monstrosity right here can run you about 80. Which brings us to our left-handed. So it turns out you can get a left-handed AR-15 lower receiver, and it's going to cost you about 200 bucks. Alternately, you can spend 30 bucks on this little fella and this is called a bad lever and it attaches to your ping pong paddle bolt catch stretches down and through your uh, trigger guard and you can manipulate it with your other hand and installed it's gonna look like this well I have no first-hand experience with bad levers I've read accounts that it's too easy to activate and that you can end up inadvertently closing your bolt prior to inserting a magazine for a reload. 
So you should consider that before you make a purchase. Which again brings us to the most important part, peacocking. Again, everybody on the range needs to know that you've spent top dollar. And again, if you can't find the color you want for anodize, you can have someone Cerakote it to anything you want in the palette. And we'll close it out by having a look at uh, this custom job by our trusted associate, Tom Gilbert, Gilbert Gun Exchange, Elk Mound, Wisconsin. Looks like some brewers, some packers, and uh, some custom coloration on the safety selector and the bolt catch. And here's a final look at our costs so far in the build I'm working at. Coming up next week, we're going to look at takedown pins, buffer tube, spring, and buffer. Thanks for sticking around, and I hope this information fits the bill.